Hi again. The last video I uploaded detailed how I install a microphone into the accordion, and this one will be the beginning of installing a MIDI system. I'm hoping that the parts here will total under $15, and from what I've found so far, this seems to be doable. So let's get started. I still the front cover off the accordion, and the goal is to be able to electrically sense this key arm movement. And so for this project, I decided on using Hall Effect sensors, which are effectively magnet proximity switches. Methods of detecting the key press without magnetic sensors exist, but things like optical sensors or simple tactile switches are either just expensive, or in my opinion, just much more difficult to implement. So here's the A3144, which is a Hall Effect sensor. These cost me about $3.50 for 50 pieces shipped free, and I bought these all on eBay. The magnets I'm using are these really tiny ones that cost me under a dollar for 50 of them, also shipped free. Here, as I change distance between the magnet and the chip, you can see the output LED turn on and off, effectively a momentary switch. Now that video is actually from about four months ago, and when I tried to replicate that same experiment today, I ended up getting a toggle switch effect. What could explain that? Well, uh, maybe the physics of the world changed in the last few months, or maybe the eBay seller just messed up and put a part marked 44E530 into the 44E538 bag. But I don't blame them though, right? Other than the last number, they look identical. And I think there's only a single 530 in the bag of 538s. But the point here is that they work. I can get a signal depending on the presence of the magnet. But now I have to figure out how far away the switches activate to be able to place them into the accordion. Well, I did some research before I bought these sensors, and according to the data sheet, these things turn on when they sense somewhere around 50 to 200 of some units, and I'm guessing these are Gauss. It's 55 for the 3144. When I put the magnet composition and dimensions into an online calculator, here's what I get. Looking axially along the magnet, a distance of around zero gives a pretty large number. And I'm assuming since uh, these units are Gauss, that it should match um, the scale of the things that are on the data sheet as well. As you increase the Y distance, the number decreases. At about a third of an inch axially, the number is still above the 55 specified for the 3144. So I tried the calculator again with the observation point along the other axis instead. And it looks like I still need about half an inch for this thing to switch off. Now that distance is a bit larger than I hoped for, but I think it should still be fine. This magnetic switch output gets fed into an Arduino, and I'll talk about the issue of getting all the keys together later, but after some more research, I found that it takes multiple pieces of software for you to get a MIDI output from an Arduino to a sound played from your speakers. Now for the software, I've taken and modified an example of someone else's build of their MIDI system, and I'll put the link in the description, and I think I ended up pretty much with the same software setup that that other guy did. That serial MIDI data now gets piped into something called Hairless Serial Bridge, which is a piece of software that takes the serial data and routes it into a MIDI device. Just select the Arduino device on the left, and on the right, since we don't have a MIDI device yet, we have to make a virtual MIDI device using a piece of software called Loop MIDI. Next, I need a piece of software to take that MIDI data and synthesize it into sound. For that, I use VMPK, or the Virtual MIDI Piano Keyboard. All these software are free, and again, this one will be linked in the description. Eventually, after starting and stopping each piece of software in some order, you know, jiggling the cables a little bit, and just overall clicking through a lot of menus, this is what you get. Next, I modified the Arduino sketch to sense the magnetic switch. The resistor and LEDs were removed and VCC ground stayed. The third pin then got plugged directly into a random Arduino pin. In the code, the pin is mapped with an internal pull-up, so when the sensor pulls the line low, the Arduino will detect it. Now all that worked as planned, and now it's time to get a single MIDI key onto the accordion. I can either stick the magnet onto the valve or the sensor onto the valve, but the magnet on the valve 
makes much more sense because the wires don't have to move. After a good amount of taping, I found the magnet can actually be placed pretty close to the sensor without triggering it if the magnet's axis is oriented directly through the top of the sensor. When the magnet moves off the top of the sensor, the part of the sensor that's most sensitive, which is going to be the front and the back, picks up the magnetic field pretty nicely. So the next question is whether I can epoxy or superglue the magnet onto the green foam or if I have to do it onto the wood. And luckily I found a bottle of wood glue right in front of me, so wood glue it is. I left it overnight and it looks like the glue held the magnet in place. Now for gluing the sensor in place, I cleaned the surface with a bit of water and then just hot glued it to where I thought it should go. Well, unfortunately the hot glue didn't really stick to the silver paint, so I tried super glue next. The sensor can always be adjusted by simply bending the wires, so I wasn't too concerned about getting it in the right place on my first try. I won't uh, attempt to arrange or solder wires in this video because that needs a whole lot more planning and I'll probably do that in the next video or I'll get to explaining a little bit near the end of this video. Alright, so the super glue worked pretty well and I'm able to hook the wires up into the system. So here it is, the single key MIDI keyboard. Alright, here's the final demo. I've got the Arduino on the computer and the wire comes up here to the Hall effect sensor with the magnet attached to the key. And when you press the key, you can see that uh, the keyboard software lights up. And I'm also getting a MIDI messages up on hairless and a loop MIDI is registering the extra data that's coming through. And now I've got the accordion instrument set up on the computer. I just wonder how that sounds. None of the single key is complete, I have to look forward to putting in 40 more sensors. There are several challenges in doing so. After saving 2 pins for serial connections, the Arduino still has 18 pins that can be used for digital I.O. But again, there are 41 keys on the piano accordion. The Arduino Mega can solve this problem because it's got a whole lot of pins, but getting one will immediately blow the budget of $15. So the Arduino Clo Mini are only around 250 each, and I think I need to stick with these things. If I use multiplexers, which are essentially ways to map multiple wires onto one wire by selecting the one you want using a binary number, with 4 4 to 1 mux and 12 2 to 1 mux, the total number of input pins I get comes out of 40, which is actually one short of 41. Now I can also try to figure out how to program one of these random large pin count MCUs, but that's probably not happening. What I'm planning to do is to make use of Arduino's analog inputs. If I can somehow figure out how to tie together two or three keys onto one analog pin, I think I could get around about half the keys mapped into a single Arduino. And if that works, then I can simply use two Arduinos, make one talk to the other, and the other talk to the computer, and I would have a complete piano MIDI keyboard. Now, this is about the end of this video, and congrats on making it to the end. If you enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy some of my other projects as well, so please hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time.